Storybook decorators wrap your stories in additional markup, styling, logic, and context without impacting story controls. We often use decorators to control themes, apply state management, introduce logic, or even just wrap a component in required markup. In this video, I'll show you all of the basics of storybook decorators. Let's dive in. Decorators pull a ton of weight in Storybook. If I were to show you all the ways that you could use them, this video would be at least an hour long. So I'll focus strictly on the mechanics of decorators, how to write them and how to compose them throughout your Storybook. And to make sure that we have clear visual examples, I'm gonna do that with just colors and shapes. For our first decorator, let's just add a pink padding box around our primary button story. Define a decorator's array with a primary story. Then add a function that returns a div with hello decorators inside of it. Note that this decorator completely obliterated our story. So to fix that, take story as a decorator function argument, render it using JSX, and now we have a primary button story decorated with this div. Now to visualize this div, let's add some styling, a pink background color, a little padding, and make it display inline block. So it just wraps the button instead of taking the whole line. Simple as that, you've now made your first decorator. Now, the decorator's property takes an array, which means that we can apply as many decorators as we like. However, it's important to know the order in which these decorators are applied. Let's duplicate this decorator and make this second one add a purple outline. Note how they compose together. Each decorator wraps the story in the order that it's defined. First, the pink padding decorator, then the purple outline. Swap the order and the purple outline is applied first. A single decorator can be applied to multiple stories when defined on component meta. Define a decorator's array on the default export object. Move the purple outline decorator up to the meta decorator's definition. Now, before I hit save, I want you to guess how this is gonna be applied. Will the purple button stay closest to the rendered story like we see now? Or will it snap back to the previous state with the purple outline outside of the pink padding? Let's save, and if you guessed option two, you're right. Now, this may be confusing at first because the purple outline decorator is defined first in the file, but bear with me. The pink padding decorator is applied first because it's defined directly on the story, making it a higher priority. The purple outline decorator is applied second because it's added to all stories and is a lower priority. Now, check the other buttons to see that they're all wrapped in the purple outline as well. Decorators can also be defined on a global level. This is most often used for theming and internationalization. Now, today I wanna to keep our demos focused on what we can see visually without a lot of setup, so I'm gonna stick with our colors and shapes examples. Open the Storybook Preview module, add a decorators array in the preview definition, create a decorator that wraps a story with padding and a tomato border. Refresh, and we see that the tomato border is the outermost decorator. Because this tomato border decorator is global, it's applied to all stories and is always the last to wrap the components. Note that this module syntax that we're using for preview is Storybook 7 specific. You can find documentation to both the Storybook 7 and 6.5 versions in the description below. So what if you wanna share decorators, move them around, or even hold them inside of modules? Well, they're just functions, so it's super easy to do. Cut the decorator found in the primary story, Use a name that describes that decorator well with pink decorator. As a pattern, we generally prefix decorators using the word with. Now paste that into a module and give it a name. When using TypeScript, you'll need to apply the decorator type to this function, which we'll get from a corresponding renderer package. Now I'm using React, but if you use Vue or Svelte or Angular, all of these are gonna have different renderers that you'll import types from. Okay, so that's it for today. You've learned a ton. You learned how to define decorators, compose them at different levels, component, story, and global, and how to extract them into modules, even with typed definitions. But even with all the stuff that we covered today, we're just scratching at the surface of what you can do with decorators in Storybook. So to use more practical examples, I've included two videos that may be more helpful to you in the links above. Thank you so much to Chromatic for sponsoring this video. I'm Jantastic, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.